Hello, everyone, and welcome to the aquarium. Um, welcome to our newest edition of Deeper Dive, where we show a glimpse of some of the aspect of the aquarium that you don't normally get to see on a regular visit. Um, today, we're focusing on life support. So basically, where our water comes from and how we treat it. Um, life support systems are interesting because they are intentionally kind of hidden behind the scenes to improve the guest experience. Um, but it's really the most important aspect of the aquarium because every single animal relies on our clean water. Um, I am Jeff Harms, the education manager here, kind of hosting. Um, and today we're joined by Chris Brady, who's our curator of life support. My name is Chris Brady. I'm the manager of the life support systems here at the Oregon Coast Aquarium. Today we're going to watch a little video here on what it takes to get the water from the bay, filter it and store it, and get it to use here at the aquarium. So this is our seawater intake. It's actually a dock attached to the OSU dock out in the corner bay where we pick up all of our salt water from. We have two redundant pumping systems that run 50 horsepower pumps and a redundant piping system that takes this water to our seawater storage. We use vacuum pumps to actually draw up the water to the pumps to prime them. Uh, everything comes through uh, screens on the suctions of these pumps. The pumps have a uh, high density polyethylene suction line that we use. The pumping or the piping system is redundant and can be used with either one of the pumps. So uh, in a case that we have a line fail on one side and a pump fail on the other side, we can still get our water to our storage. Uh, we don't use utilize chemicals to clean our pipes. We uh, switch them back and forth quarterly and allow the salt water in them to go anaerobic, killing off any of the growth, and we flush them out and switch to that line. Our uh, Intake system is about 3,000 feet away from our seawater storage. We pump it to seawater storage and we store half a million gallons of raw seawater that's unfiltered. It's in two separate reservoirs, so we have the ability to drain one to clean it. We do uh, biannually and we swap those back and forth between the two reservoir systems. We do utilize a little bit of this raw water to the main building to one exhibit our outdoor wave crash that has a lot of filter feeders in it. So that water we do not filter before we take to that exhibit for the, so they can feed on it. Uh, at our seawater storage, we have the capability of filtering our water at a full thousand gallons a minute to the building. Uh, our intake system is capable of maintaining that thousand gallons a minute to storage. We can run that filtering system all the way down to 70 gallons per minute if needed be and all the way up to the thousand gallons a minute for service during the morning hours. Uh, the system is monitored by a computer control system that monitors the salinity and temperature of the waters. This system monitors all of that uh, parameters and automatically does this for us. So during the low tides at night, high tides during the day, we can either divert the water or use the water as needed. After our seawater filtering, uh, the water travels about another 2,000 feet or a little bit more to our service core that distributes the water between our passages exhibits and all of the outer in pinniped exhibits and all of the main building exhibits. So when we clean our reservoirs, since they're tanks here at the aquarium, uh, we're able to collect the animals out of these tanks as they grow up. They come in real small through our intake screen. And since our reservoirs are full of raw water, there's plenty of food for everything to grow. Uh, when we do clean these, the aquarists come down and collect all sorts of animals from crabs to shrimp to fish and sea stars. and one of our last cleanings of our uh, smaller diverter basin had over 200 sea stars in it the last time we drained it, which was an amazing sight when all the water drained out of it. Um, and we just rinse these out. We fire hose out all of the sediment, but we don't scrape all the animals off the wall or sterilize them because we use that as part of our filtering process. We can use up to a million gallons of salt water in one day just to do all the service work to all of our passengers filters, uh, mammal systems, and all the main building systems. And that, a lot of that water usage comes in about a four and a half hour period, five hour period. And we reduce every flow because we don't need all that flow for middle of the night, things like that. People aren't here working to service things. The reason we store a lot of uh, half a million gallons of salt water is the bay does not stay in good salinity or good temperature. Mainly the salinity can go out during the winter time and during the beginning of the summer months the temperature can get a little high or later in the summer months depending on when the offshore winds and the upwelling occurs. So our salt water temperature can fluctuate greatly from the bay from close to 45 degrees all the way up to 65, 67 degrees. After we've utilized all of this water, since we don't use chemicals, we treat it affluently treat it with ozone before and off-gas it before releasing it back into the bay. We do this with all affluent treated water from the buildings and all of our exhibits. 
because we only house native species here and we don't do research on non-native species, we have a permit just to utilize ozone versus other chemicals that can have a lot of hazmat. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video with us. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and what it takes to get our water and what we do here and hope to see you here next time at the aquarium. It is, and we treat that, that exhibit and our changing exhibits a little differently. Um, most of our systems are can be flow through and the way we uh, utilize the water to maintenance the tanks, but in those particular systems, they're all closed systems and we uh, treat the water a little differently and usually have to buffer it because our, our water isn't exactly like it needs to be for tropical fish. The pH is a little bit different and so is the alkalinity. So we try to keep those closed and we, uh, utilize the water to uh, basically wash the filters themselves out and don't exchange it in the tank. So it is a little bit different in how we do those systems and it's still all fluently treated by ozone, any water that we do take out of those. They collected a few of them to put in some of the exhibits uh, in the main building and the rest of them we leave in place because the walls are coated with mussels, everything else that they eat. So they're not laying on the bottom, they're all stuck to the wall. So we get rid of the sediment and fill it back up with new salt water. We have certain uh, husbandry volunteers that come down and actually help with it along with Aquarius. So, you know, we have a really nice decking to come up and you can actually see down in there, but. Getting down in the reservoir requires some permitting and uh, some training for actually climbing into them. Uh, power outage, we actually have backup generators at the main building, has its entire one that serves all the systems there. We have another generator at the passages of the deep that does all of that and our uh, industrial holding areas, and then we have a generator at our seawater storage that allows us to actually still pump the water. The only place we do not have a generator is our intake dock because of it sits over the water and they don't want to store and fuel over top of the water. But we can get by with what we have stored in water up to a week's time, depending on how we use it. Uh, usually we, st we store up to that half million that we can use up to a million gallons in a 24 hour period. Most of it's used in that four hour window in the morning. And then we reduce flow for certain systems that have flow throughs to them on native things. Uh, the outdoor wave crash that uses raw water that always has so much water going into it 24 hours a day. So it's pretty much the only time we don't use that much water is uh, during the winter and really heavily raining times when we're out of salinity, we have to really reduce what we use. And then when we do come back in, it's use as much as we can to catch back up with maintenance. We have protocols for that. We have emergency shutoffs and uh, so does Hatfield. So if no one has any type of spills or there's any spills, uh, we're notified by either Coast Guard or State Patrol because State Patrol takes uh, oversight of the Hatfield intake and we have emergency shutoffs on the outside so any of those people can go right up to our dock, push a button and it stops bringing in the water. So the anaer anaerobic, uh, everything uses oxygen out of the water, whether it's living living in the water. So when we close that off and stop bringing in new water, they basically exhaust all of the oxygen out of it, which turns it anaerobic. And then the animals themselves, they're, the growth that we're trying to get rid of, the dying of that creates uh, hydrogen sulfide that helps kill off everything else, which is that rotten egg smell you smell in the bay during low tide. And that helps clean all the pipes out. And we rinse that back out and ready to use. A lot of it comes from the growth of stuff and the, uh, how corrosive salt water is. 
saltwater will eat through just about anything, any fastener, anything that's weak. You, we use a lot of stainless steel and things and plastic everywhere, and it still finds a way to get through certain things. There are, uh, we have a lot of foam fractionators or protein skimmers uh, on a lot of the systems or some of the bigger ones are on the passages systems. Uh, we utilize a lot of UV sterilization as well. Um, it's a non-chemical and it works very, very well at what it does, for, especially for salt water. Uh, other than that, it's mainly the sand filtration and we use some biological filtration in some of the smaller exhibits that house uh, nitrifying bacteria that helps break down all the ammonia in the water. But for the most part, it's uh, mechanical filtration. Okay, so I think that's about the end, Chris. So thank you for joining us and explaining life support to everyone. Um, and thank you all for joining us to listen to, to Chris and, and watch the video. Um, and hopefully we'll see you next month. So thank you everyone and have a great day.